This is the second video in our three-part series about using a single crystal X-ray diffractometer for determining the 3D atomic structure of a molecule. This video will introduce mounting and centering samples. Once you have determined that the instrument is safe to use, you will select the crystal you would like to measure using a microscope. We will demonstrate the general procedure for organic or inorganic small molecule crystals. Protein crystals typically require additional special procedures to transfer them to the X-ray diffractometer for measurement. For additional help in selecting appropriate crystals, please refer to our previous video titled Analyzing Protein Crystals Using a Microscope. Modern X-ray crystallography uses cryogenic temperatures to improve the quality of the data collected. Your small molecule sample should be placed in peritone or parabar oil on a microscope slide to cryoprotect the crystal. For air sensitive samples, the crystals can be put under oil in the glove box before transferring to a microscope. A protein sample also requires cryoprotection, but tends to require more extensive screening to find an appropriate cryoprotectant such as ethylene glycol or glycerol. Let's take a look at the sample under the microscope. Once you have selected the best crystal, move the crystal to the side to remove some of the excess oil. Too much oil can lower the quality of the data. Then take a sample holder or loop and scoop up or pick the crystal. The oil is sufficiently sticky to help the crystal stay on the loop, but you should transfer the sample to the X-ray diffractometer relatively quickly. Once you have the crystal on the loop, place it on the goniometer. Once on the goniometer, the sample will be in the cryostream with a temperature of 100 Kelvin and will be flash frozen in place on the loop. The goniometer has a magnetic base, so the loop easily snaps into place. You must be very careful not to touch the detector or beam stops with your hands. After sample mounting, you will need to center the sample so that it will be aligned with the X-ray beam at all angles. The following picture highlights the three possible rotation axes of the goniometer, including theta, phi, and kappa. In the Apex 3 or Proteum 3 software, you can turn on the microscope camera to allow you to see a magnified view of the sample. Add crosshairs to the view to help you determine the center. On the goniometer, use the special key to move the goniometer side to side or up and down until you see the sample in the center of the crosshairs on the computer screen. Now the crystal is centered in that direction. In the Apex 3 software, press spin phi 90 to turn the goniometer 90 degrees.
Again, use the special key to move the goniometer side to side until the sample is centered in the crosshairs. In the Apex 3 software, press spin phi 180 to turn the goniometer 180 degrees. Again, use the special key to move the goniometer side to side until the sample is centered in the crosshairs. Generally, the sample will now be sufficiently centered, but more rotations may be used if the sample isn't properly centered. Be sure to shut the enclosure doors before continuing. This concludes the second part of this three-part video series. The final video segment covers crystal screening and data collection.